Hello guys this is Mr. Retrobred coming back with a new V Rising series. On my journey of beating the game on Brutal Difficulty which changes up the game substantially. With Brutal setting loot is 25% more, durability loss is minus 50%, standard units set to 40% more DPS, and all V Blood units are 3 levels higher with 75% damage multiplier with lastly 25% more HP, not gonna lie it's gonna be a tough one. But that's what this journey is going to lead to so strap onto your seats and grab your popcorn cause here we go. I start off with making my character choosing body type 1 cause that's how games are nowadays just look at the chat of a body the game gives us. Now with all my setting done we name ourselves bread so off we go. Our journey begins with me waking up in some long forgotten sarcophagus. As I finally arise from my slumber there is nothing but blue light illuminating my way out of this empty crypt. Walking down to the stairway I mentally prepare myself for countless deaths we are about to have doing this. Exiting the crypt we are greeted with the glorious sunlight. I set my sights on my first foe a level 1 skeleton thus leading to free bones. His friends don't take kindly to me murdering him. So I rush in killing off the two witnesses can't have anyone knowing. With a job well done I can claim the bone ring reward. An achievement well done indeed. I queue up a bone sword to make along with that new bone ring for magic damage. With the third skeleton dead we learn a new spell called Crimson Bolt. Next on the to-do list fire off two magic bolts at anyone sounds pretty easy. Following that blood kite is learned giving us a overpowered counter spell. The quest wants us to parry twice so off we go with parry one, then followed by the second. Now that it's done the real game can now begin, heading off to Far Bane Woods Eastern Spawn. Claiming Bone Guard Vestments. I cue the chest plate and leggings so we aren't running around like a naked madman. We make our way to the first teleporter so it can be used in the future once we've unlocked the second one on the map. A wolf shows up at out of nowhere leading to our first blood victim, we're drinking good tonight. Thanks to all the animals I've slaughtered I can make the missing set piece to my armor. Just finishing that quest allows me to somehow make bone axe and mace. The Great Vermin Salve is unlocked, nothing says top-notch healing medicine like salve made out of dead rats and fiber. I then steal a chest from these bandits checking the loot later. I come across a new bandit copper mine, it's about time Stunlock Studios added a new place to mine copper in the beginning, now today goes by the main copper mines are picked clean on multiplayer servers by that one guy. I congratulate them for adding this. I find my way to the lumber yard a great beginner place to gather lots of random loot and early game chest. Wouldn't you know it a 59% worker shows up so I can have that sweet early game worker blood for base building. And lucky me he drops the lumberjack axe a big upgrade compared to my bone ones. Once I am done with the lumber mill I go to crafting 6 vermin salves, can't be running around without some meds in my hotbar. After finishing off 3 wolves we claim the next objective unlocking the castle heart, the very fundamental item for making bases in the game. As I open my map I get an idea where to set up our starter base, somewhere centralized around the copper mines and the local boss arenas for easy access to loot. I finally make it to my first starter location, prompting me to cut down all these trees so I can centralize the blood heart down for future base planning. With that vegetation now out of the way we set up our glorious blood heart down. Opening up the heart I give it that sweet blood essence to power this puppy up. With that we now set up foundations and walls so we aren't living like some human peasants. Here is a quick compilation of me placing floors down hope you enjoy it. With the framework done I claim our next prize shelter and storage we are moving up in this world. Gotta set up the mist brazier. I don't want to end up getting sunburned now do I, next followed up by a cool coffin bed since we are gonna die a lot. We can now set up the basics of crafting thanks to that last task. Thanks to our new workbench I can upgrade all my bone gear to the next level. I am looking a lot snazzy now. Blood tracking is soon unlocked letting me hunt down those elusive boss targets. First on our kill list the alpha wolf, gonna need that sweet wolf transformation to traverse the map in style. Once I finish having a whiff of that blood scent, I initiate the epic battle. I 
almost forgot to mention that all bosses now have a new mechanic in their attack patterns, taking me off guard when next thing I know he can just pin me down and start munching me like him a chicken nuggy. A savage beast indeed. Thanks to our sick plays I come out as the victor of this duel. Now it's time to gain that new ability by stealing that sweet blood and with that our first ever boss battle is done. Another quest done another thing to add to our to-do list. I can now use the wolf form to travel faster and thanks to that new Castlevania DLC. My new wolf form has a cool sword on the back, worth every penny. Once I make it to the leather camp I try to aggro the bandits first, but instead aggro the frost archer Keeley leaving me in a bad situation. So with no other option it's time to engage the boss in a 1v3. This Frost Archer's new move is instead of running away in cloak form, she walks up to the player and casts a Frost Nova leaving anyone caught in it slowed. With time and a couple of finesses we come out the champions in this battle. Thanks to her power I can choose one of three frost powers, which at the end of the day are pretty good. Since I happen to be close to these merchants I decided to buy a brew of ferocity, giving me three attack power for one hour not a bad deal. Now that I'm back home I set up a tannery and blood extractor to help with refining. Along with a vermin nest, so those delicious rats can spawn at base. I check our kill list setting our sights on Errol the Stonebreaker, the man won't see his death coming with our two deathless boss kills. I soon arrive at his copper mine lair jumping down to start this hit order. Enjoy the rest of this fight not gonna lie it was a close one. As a side note I sped this part up by 1.2 speed, let me know down below if I should speed up the boss fights or leave them unedited. Still trying to get a feel on which method is best.
With my last Crimson Bolt, I land the killing blow. Thanks to these new mechanics, the game sure made it a lot harder when it comes to bosses now. In the midst of sucking the V blood power, I can now choose from the Chaos Tree later choosing Chaos Bolt since it's still kinda broken. After the fight, I learn the research desk, which will come in handy later on. Once I'm back at base doing basic tasks, I see that some bosses now give new resource only storage which is a huge game changer compared to manually organizing every box. This 1.0 update finally brings a lot of quality of life changes can't wait to see the rest. Another job done with castle relocation heart task complete. I next finish upgrading the castle heart to level 2 thus letting me gain the next quest. Thanks to that I also unlock stone castle foundations plus walls. I soon deem it's time to hunt our next target Rufus the Foreman who happens to be the Lumberyard boss. Just as I am exiting my home none other than the Chaos Archer shows up making me hide away, so I don't end up dying. On my daily patrol for loot I see with my little eyes a bandit caravan, one of the new additions to the game I choose to run away since I'm not looking for a death wish right now. On my way to the Lumberyard, I hit up our local bandit store looking to buy a limited edition forge flooring. Before fighting the boss I get to making a copper mace so we can do some actual damage to him as well as being able to mine copper and metal later on. With our new abilities at hand the boss battle commences. As a side note Rufus also has a new ability is shooting more rain arrows I think to be honest I can't remember after looking through the footage. Someone down in the comments can let me know thanks. With our newfound abilities Rufus was just a cakewalk of a boss. Now to extract more newfound powers out of him. Alright guys this next boss fight ends with me finally dying not to a boss but as lackey talk about getting unlucky. But what can you do when it's a 1v2, with that death number 1 is up. Next fight I get the stupid idea to fight him in the daytime my stubbornness knows no bounds. But hey what can I say what kills you only makes me stronger. 
no surprise here I then get one shot again by that coward of an archer leading to death number 2. And for those down below saying to kill the archer he's just gonna respawn her back in anyways so it's a waste of time killing her. With attempt 3 I take some rogue blood hoping it's gonna make things easier for us. Please enjoy the rest of this fight. going to crush you, then it's back to work. Oh man this last part here was a close one just making it out with a sliver of HP but thanks to my quick thinking grace in the armorer is no more. In hindsight I could have killed him more effectively if I had just gotten better blood or upgraded my ring, but it's all about the challenge here and my pride to take the boss out with what I currently have. And with that finally done the man drops some free books for me. Must be his secret stash if you know what I mean. I get back home now able to use illusion magic tree. Weighing my options for now Spectral Wolf seems to be the okay choice for now. If not I can always respec it later. I check out the next boss target Gorswine the Ravager, the first mage necromancer boss. Before heading over I make a quick stop to Shady Book Dealer for some Shade Walker armor plans. Out of the nowhere I spy a 98% bear, stopping everything I'm doing to get the sweet blood type. Talk about an easy meal since he was already close to death. Once I finish clearing out all the trash I finally confront the main boss for a fair 1v1. To be honest this creature blood really isn't all too good when it comes to boss fights it's more or less a utility blood. To add to this Gorswine's new ability is his projectile swerving like a curveball there could be more but from what I remember that seems to be the only new thing he has.
With all my bobbing and weaving I land a critical blow on him with Chaos Bolt leading to his demise. It only took one attempt to kill him making me think they didn't really change much about Gorswine to make him tough, but hey I will take any victory I can get. And with that we will end our journey to beating the game on brutal setting for another day. Hope you enjoy what you've seen so far many hurdles still await us. If you like what you see hit that sub button or like the video any support helps a lot. Till next time guys have a good one.